Let's take a look now at what we can do if we have our data in CSV file format. Uh, so you'll notice I actually will have two files here, uh, one for the airports and one for the flights. Uh, so you can see in front of you the airport file just has four airports and for each airport the city and the state. We could put other information in here. The idea here is that each of those columns will become an attribute uh, or a property for each airport. Uh, and so we could have things like the latitude and longitude or the size of the airport, uh, any kind of information you can imagine for an airport we could make an attribute. Uh, the other file that we have here is the flights. Uh, so you can see here we've got the flight number, the airline, departure airport, arrival airport, and flight capacity for passengers. And so uh, we're going to use this file three different times. We're going to use it to create each flight and then to create each of the two relationships for the flight. So let's take a look at how we're going to do that. Uh, again, I'll do this from the command line in the web admin tool. Uh, and what I'm going to do is use a cipher query using the load CSV uh, format. And so what I'm going to do is I'll load the airports first. So here's the query that will load the airports. And um, watch out for new line characters in, in your queries. Uh, when I'm copying and pasting it over from a text file. So it's going to be a load CSV and then I tell Neo4j that my file has headers so it's going to know how to look up those headers uh, and then I tell it the file location so from and here's where I've put the file on my machine uh, and then I can say as airports so what that'll do is it'll read the CSV file in and it'll create a new object for that CSV file called airports and I can refer to that object now in my create statement and so alright once I get past that here now I've got I'm gonna construct the basic syntax for a create statement for each airport so you can see I'm gonna say create uh, a1 that's the name of the node that I'm creating if I wanted to return it I could uh, and then I'm gonna say give it a label of airport and then again just like before we're gonna have three properties we're gonna have the label so that's the three digit code and then we're gonna have the city and the state now notice what I do here I say label colon and then I say take the airports object and look in the label column and so it'll say airports dot label look in the label column and then for city it's gonna say take the airports object dot and look in the city column and then for state it's gonna take airports dot state and so it'll look in the state column and if we take a peek back at that CSV file we'll see that what it'll do is iterate through each airport row so it'll say for the first airport we're gonna give it a label of DTW the city is Detroit and the state is Michigan and it's gonna fill those three values in uh, so it's gonna look them up dynamically and it'll iterate through the entire file so in this case through four rows and create one node for each of those four airports so when I hit enter what we'll see is added four labels, created four nodes, set 12 properties. Each airport had three properties and it took 351 milliseconds. And so if I did match n return n, we should see four nodes. And sure enough, there they are. Uh, all four airports were created in one query. Now, uh, we've got the airports. The next thing we need is the flights and so I'll create those flights using another load CSV query so here's the syntax for that uh, load CSV with headers just as before from and now I tell it a different file the one that has all the flights in it and I'll say as flights so now when I want to refer to particular columns in the file I refer to flights dot and then column name so create here I'll just use n for the node it's a node with a label of flight so that's the type of node I'm creating. Uh, and then the properties here that we'll assign, number will be flights.flight, so it'll look up the flight number. Uh, airline will be flights.airline, it'll look up the flight's airline. Uh, and then capacity will be flights.capacity, so it'll look up the flight capacity for each row. And it'll iterate through all 24 rows. So I'll go ahead and run this query. And we'll see it added 24 labels, created 24 nodes, and set 72 properties. So we now, if we run uh, our match and return n, we see a whole bunch of dots here. And I can make this full screen. This is still being developed. 
uh, so it's it's not a perfect interface so not everything is fitting on this if I make my browser window a little bit bigger I could make everything fit uh, but uh, so you can trust me though we can see the two airports here there are two more and then it looks like we can see about 18 of the 24 flights uh, if we had a larger window we would be able to see more uh, so this is all still in development this browser uh, but it's a nice way to view small graphs and then okay so let me uh, bring back my command line. I've created the airports, I've created the flights. Next up is going to be to create the relationships. And so I'll do the arrivals and then the departures. So here's a query to create the arrival relationship. Uh, again, I'm copying and pasting these in, so it's creating a new line there that I don't want. Uh, so load CSV with headers as before from, and this is the same CSV file I just used, uh, but we're going to use it a different way now. So as flights again, but now what I'm going to do is create relationships. So I do match, and then I say node A, which will be a flight type, uh, but find the one where the number matches flights.flight. .flight. So for each row of the CSV file, find the node that matches the flight number. And then node B is going to be an airport node, and find the one where it matches the flights.arrive value. So that's the arrival airport code in the CSV file. So it finds the node for the flight and the node for the arrival airport and then it says create a relationship from A to B and the relationship will have the label of arrives. And so it'll iterate through all 24 and we'll see that it'll say created 24 relationships. And again I'm not asking it to return any rows so it's returning zero rows. Alright that's one we now need to create the other set of relationships which is to say the departure relationships this is identical. The only changes are uh, instead of looking up flights.arrive, I look up flights.depart. So I look up the departure airport. And then the relationship that's created is one of type departs. Uh, other than that, it's identical. So when I run that query again, it says created 24 relationships. And now if I do match n return n, this actually does seem to all fit on the screen and you can see all of those relationships are in there. So one thing I could do if I want, I can drag things around a little bit on here. Uh, you saw they're kind of floating around. Uh, once I drag an object though and I drop it, it stays pinned. So now when I drag other objects, you'll see the Pittsburgh airport isn't moving. So I've told it I want to lock those in. Uh, so I'm going to put the airports in the corners like this. Uh, and now I can very clearly see which flights go which way. Uh, the only other thing that's a little bit trickier to visualize is arrival versus departure for each flight. So again, I could drag these up and down a little bit to clarify that. So I can see now very clearly flight 45 departs Boston and arrives in Pittsburgh. Flight 46 departs Pittsburgh, arrives in Boston. Uh, I could do that for all of the different flights if I want to. So here I'll do Detroit to Pittsburgh and vice versa, for instance. And that just lets me visualize it a little bit more clearly. Uh, so you can see we've got all 24 of our flights in now. Uh, and we've got uh, all four airports and all of the relationships have been established. So this data set is now complete in our database.